Okay, welcome to 3.4 Linear Programming, and this is the last section of Chapter 3. So we're finishing up our unit on inequalities, and today is linear programming is an application of inequalities in two variables. It's really pretty cool stuff. So, suppose that a TV manufacturing company produces smart and UHD TVs using three different machines, machine A, B, and C. Okay, well, what we're going to do is they're going to give you a table, typically, something like this, all right? And the table below shows how many hours are required on each machine per day in order to produce a smart TV or a UHD TV. So the first column is my machine, machine A, machine B, and machine C. The second column would be the smart TVs. Machine A can produce one smart TV every hour. Machine B, one smart TV every hour. And machine C, four smart TVs every hour. UHD TVs. Well, machine A can produce two UHD TVs every hour and one a UHD. Machine B is one UHD TV every hour and machine C is one UHD TV every hour. And over here is the hours available. Machine A can work up to and including 16 hours every day. That's a hard working machine. Machine B needs more rest time. All right, it can only work up to and including nine hours per day. And then this typically is not the case, but this machine C, I don't know what's happening. It must be well taken care of, but it looks like this machine can work up to and including 24 hours every day. So that machine's working 24 seven. Wow. <laughs> All right, now let's uh, declare our variables. All right, I have smart TVs and UHD TVs. So can I say let X equal the number of smart TVs? So these are my X's here. And Y equal the number of UHD TVs. So these are my Y's right here. And I can now use this part of the table to create my inequalities right there. Okay, so, and first, let's talk constraints. The number of TVs cannot be negative. So your first two constraints will always be X has to be greater than or equal to zero and Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. All right. Now, when we're doing linear programming, we are always working in quadrant one. So these two constraints are always there. So I typically don't write those down. I start with the next three constraints based upon my table right here. Okay, so my third constraint here, which is usually my first constraint, is, well, look at this right here. Machine A, one hour per every smart TV X. So that would be one X plus two hours for every UHD TV Y plus two Y. And it is available for up to and including 16 hours. So wouldn't that be a less than or equal to 16? And there is my first real constraint right there. And now we do the same thing for machine B and machine C. Let's do this a little more efficiently. So for machine B, do you see one X plus one Y is less than or equal to nine? X plus Y less than or equal to nine. And for me, machine C, do you see four X's plus one Y is less than or equal to 24. So here's my three constraints that I'm gonna use right there. Now, all I need to do is graph the boundary lines for these three um, inequalities in quadrant one. And I'm gonna do that with graph paper and a ruler. All right, now on my PowerPoint here, I did it all by hand, but when you're doing this at home, you make sure you have good graph paper and you have a ruler because if you do these graphs perfectly, this is real easy. If your graphs are off, it's 
more challenging and could be even impossible. Okay, so these three inequalities will create three boundary lines. And these are in general form right here, like AX plus BY is C. All right, so I find on problems like this, I've seen students in pre-calculus convert to slope intercept because you're so used to slope intercept, but I'm just gonna find the X and Y intercept of each of these and draw my boundary line. Okay, and again, I'm using this first quadrant that I drew by hand. It's not bad, it's pretty good, but you guys probably wanna do this on graph paper. So, to find the Y intercept, well, x has to be 0, so I have 0 plus 2y is 16, so that means y would be 8. And then for the x-intercept, my y is 0, so x plus 2 times 0 is 16, so x would have to be 16. Okay, so there's my 0, 8 right there, and then my 16, 0. I'm not going to count them for you, but trust me. There it is, all the way over there. All right, and then I just break out my ruler and I draw the line determined by those two intercepts. There it is, beautiful. Now let's do the same thing for x plus y is less than or equal to nine. So the y-intercept, x would be zero, so y would have to be a nine. And for the x-intercept, the y is zero, so x would have to be nine. Okay, so there is my y-intercept of 0, 9, and my x-intercept, I'll go ahead and count this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and there it is right there. And there you have it right there. Oh, and I see a very special point. This is called a corner point right there, but we'll get there to there in just a moment. All right, we have one more to do. Let's find some intercepts. So... <clears throat> The y-intercept, my x is 0, so y has to be 24. All right, now, wow, 0, 24, I don't think my graph goes up to 24, so I'm going to have to choose another point. So I just choose any x value. All right, I'll get there in a second. Here, let me get back to this x-intercept right here. So when y is 0, 4 times x is 24, so x is 6. All right. So that one, I can plot right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's right there. But how am I gonna handle this 0, 24? Again, what I was saying just a second ago is I just pick another x value uh, that I think will have a y value that's on this uh, first quadrant here, the way I have it set up. So I'm gonna go x equals three. So if x equals three, I have four times three is 12. 12 plus y is 24, so that would make my y 12. Now let's see if we can find that point here. One, two, three, and then we're gonna go up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and just count them very carefully and it's gonna be right up here. Okay, there we go. Now, because two points determine a line, I'll put my ruler from, where is it? There's my six, zero, and then I'm gonna go through this point, three, 12, like that. And do you notice what else I have? A corner point. That's a very special point. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, look at the inequalities. They're all less than or equal to. So that gives us what we call a feasible region. If I am less than or equal to, or just less than, okay, these will all be less than or equal to though here. My feasible region is the bottom corner of quadrant one because this region right here is less than or equal to all three of those boundary lines. So any point in the feasible region is a feasible solution. So see this point right here? One and one, two, three, four, five. That is called a feasible solution, okay? We could make one smart TV and five UHD TVs every hour with our three machines. But the question is, is that going to maximize our profit? Okay, so <coughs> here's my little profit. Uh, what should I call this? Well, the profit that this company is gonna make for every smart TV is $60. The profit that this uh, company is gonna make for every UHD TV is $40. All 
All right, so we want to know the number of smart TVs X and UHD TVs Y that's going to maximize our profit. And to do that, we use what is called the corner point principle. Write and highlight this, the corner point principle. A maximum or minimum value of a linear expression, P equals AX plus BY, and remember our table, okay, if it exists, will occur at a corner point of the feasible region. So look at our feasible region right here, and there will be one, two, three, four corner points. One, and that's zero, eight. <coughs> this one, and this is why you want graph paper and a ruler right here. This will be a lot easier to do. If you don't do that, you're gonna have to solve some systems of equations which will take you a lot more time. So that is two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's two, seven right there. What's this corner point? All right, that would be one, two, three, four, five. Five what? One, two, three, four. And then the final corner point down here, and that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six, zero. So those are my four corner points of my feasible region right here. And these corner points will give me one of those corner points is going to maximize our profit. So all we do is we set up a little table situation here to maximize our profit. All right. And everybody draw this chart right here. And in the first column, we're going to talk about each corner point. And then we're gonna put a profit equation right here. What's our profit? Well, our smart TVs are X's, so we're gonna make $60 for every smart TV. And then UHD TVs are Y, so that's $40 for every UHD TV Y. So wouldn't that just be 60X plus 40Y will equal our profit? So in the middle column, I'm going to have my expression 60 times X, the number of smart TVs, plus 40 times Y, the number of UHD TVs, and then that will equal my profit, which will be in this third column right here. So let's list our corner points in column 1, 0, 8. And then uh, 2, 7. And then 5, 4. And then 6, 0. All right, let's plug these coordinates into our expression. So 60 times my x would be 60 times 0, plus 40 times my y, that'd be 40 times 8. And what does that equal? That'd be 0 plus 320. $320. So our company will have a $320 profit if we use the corner point 0, 8, or we create zero smart TVs and eight UHD TVs every hour. Okay, let's do the same thing for the other corner point, two seven. So that's gonna be 60 times two plus 40 times seven. And let's do our arithmetic. So that's gonna be 120 plus 480. Let's see if I did that right. No, 120 plus uh, seven times four. I'm sorry, there's distractions in here. So that's 280 and 120, that's 400. Okay, and now five, four. So 60 times five plus 40 times four. So that looks like 300 plus 160, that's 460. And then finally, 60 times six plus 40 times zero. That's that bottom corner point down there. And that's gonna be $360. So what would you suggest the company does? I know I would suggest we're gonna make five smart TVs and four UHD TVs every hour. And that's linear programming, really cool. Every hour, we'll produce five smart TVs and four UHD TVs. That's going to maximize our profit. And if you can maximize the profit for a company, you are going to be a very popular individual, very employable. Okay. Okay, this is our last example problem, minimizing a cost. Every day, Rhonda Miller needs a dietary supplement of four milligrams of vitamin A, 
11 milligrams of vitamin B, and 100 milligrams of vitamin C. Either of two brands of vitamin pills can be used, brand X that costs 6 cents per pill or brand Y at 8 cents per pill. Now, you're not a pharmacist, the pharmacist just figured out the info right above right there. You're like Rhonda's, you know, financial advisor. How many brand X pills and how many brand Y pills should Rhonda Miller take every day to minimize her cost? Okay, so here's a table with all of our information. Okay, and this table even has a little bit more than we had on the machine table previously. Here's our cost. The brand X pill costs six cents. The brand Y pill costs eight cents. All right, so let's make sure we understand every part of this little table or chart right here. The chart shows that a brand X pill supplies two milligrams of vitamin A, two milligrams, 3 milligrams of vitamin B, 3 milligrams, and guess what? 25 milligrams of vitamin C. Likewise, a brand Y pill supplies 1 milligram, 4 milligrams, and 50 milligrams of vitamins A, B, and C respectively. How many pills of each brand should she take each day in order to satisfy the minimum daily need most economically? So we're trying to minimize Rhonda's cost. All right, let's go to another slide with this uh, chart so we can start doing a little bit of linear programming. Okay, now X equals the number of brand X pills. Well, that's already brand X, so we're good. Y equals the number of brand Y pills. And there's a Y up there, we're good there. Okay, now our constraints. Now remember, I don't write these down. These are given. But I'm going to start my constraints with the lines right here. 2, 1, 4, 3, 4, 11, and 25, 50, and 100. Let's see how efficiently we can do this. Okay. So do you guys see 2x plus 1y? Let's start there. 2x plus y. And then I've got to think about my inequality right here. This is the minimum daily need. So that means that this 2x plus y would have to be a minimum daily need. It means we're going to have to be greater than or equal to that 4. Because we can be more than 4. All right. There's our first inequality. Now, our second inequality. Well, I see 3x plus 4y greater than or equal to 11. I hope you see it that easily. Okay, and then one more. And this is the big one right here. Vitamin C. Okay, well, we've got 25Xs plus 50Ys greater than or equal to 100. There you go. Now, we get out our graph paper and we... <laughs> draw the boundary lines for each of these inequalities, find our corner points, and we minimize Rhonda's cost. Very cool. Well, oh, I didn't use much of a graph here, did I? Wow, that kind of surprises me, especially with this one. All right, but anyway, let's go ahead and find our intercepts really quick in our head. So, the y-intercept, well, if x is 0, y is 4. Oh, I see. 1, 2, 3, 4. There it is right there. <coughs> and then if y is 0, x would be 2, x would be 4, so x is 2. Right there. And draw a line through those two intercepts. Okay? Ooh, these are going to be some fractions. So if x is 0, I have 4 times y is 11. So y would be 11 over 4, which would be, how many times is 4 going to 11? 2 and 3 fourths. So let's be careful here. 2 and 3 fourths. 1, 2, and 3 fourths. I want to be as accurate as possible here. All right. There we go. And now, how about if the uh, y is 0, then 3x equals 11. So x equals 11 over 3 which 3 goes into 11 3 times with a remainder of 2. So wouldn't that be 3 
and two thirds. Okay, let's be careful. One, two, three, and now two thirds of that distance, about right there. And I need to be as accurate as possible. Well, I lost my arrow. One, two, three. Did I say three and two thirds? About right in there. Hey, look at that. Not bad. Now draw the line through those two points. There we go. And this is not perfect because of those mixed numbers or fractions right there, but I'm betting this is the corner point right there if I had done this perfect. All right. Uh, this looks a little cleaner even with those big coefficients. If x equals 0, I have 50y equals 100, so y equals 2. And if y equals 0, I have 25x is 100, so x is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. And now draw the line through those two intercepts right there. And let's see if we can come up with our corner points. It's not perfect because of these fractions right here. But again, you're going to assume that you're going to get some real clean coordinates here. So I'm saying my corner points would be, oh, and by the way, greater than or equal to. So remember in the last problem, this was the feasible region? Well, now I'm minimizing a cost. So this is going to be my feasible region out here. And then these are going to be my corner points right here, right here, right there, and right there. Corner points. So 0, 4 is my first corner point. And then this looks like it would be a 1, 2. And then the next corner point will be right here. Oh, I'm going to get a fraction on one of them. All right, but that looks like 1, 2, 3, and then a 1 half for my y. So 3 and 0 0.5. And then I've got my intercept right here, which was 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 4, 0 right there. And there's my four corner points right there of this seasonal region. One of these corner points is going to minimize Rhonda's cost. And we're going to use our uh, cost formula to determine which one it is. And we'll simplify this a little bit too. So our cost formula was given. Cost is six times the brand X pills plus eight times every brand Y pill. So if I go zero four, let's just go six times zero plus eight times four. And six times zero plus eight times four, that would be 32 cents every day. Not bad. Can we do better? All right, this would be 6 times 1 plus 8 times 2, and that's going to be 6 plus 16, all right? So that's going to be what? 22 cents every day. Hey, we just saved Rhonda money, 10 cents a day right there. And then, now I don't like this half pill business, but if this is going to save costs significantly, I'll use it. I remember both for my grandmother and my parents, there were times when... I'm cutting their pills in half, and I don't know, that makes me nervous. It seems to waste some of the pill, and I don't know if I cut them perfectly, you know, but I did my best. All right, anyway, right here. 6 times 3 plus 8 times 0 0.5. That's 18 plus 4 more. That's 22 as well. But again, I don't want to cut pills in half, so... I'm probably going to use the point one two unless four zero down here saves me some money or excuse me saves Rhonda some money, and that's going to be six times four plus eight times zero, and that's twenty four cents. So we have a winner right here. Rhonda Miller is going to take one brand X pill every day and two brand Y pills every day, and that's going to cost her twenty two cents a day. <clears throat> All right, so that's linear programming. Pretty cool stuff. So I'd like you guys to do your homeworks on page 112 for 3.4 and do 1, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Make sure you have craft paper and a ruler and have fun. <laughs>